guys, welcome back to another Nintendo Arcade, I'm Alex and I hope you enjoyed my last video which is about Radar Scope. I know it wasn't a very good game but it's nice to see the history of early Nintendo games before Donkey Kong and just to see where they were going with certain stuff and certain ideas. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I really enjoyed doing that video and today as promised I'm going to show you my Nintendo Versus system which is a dual system because it's got two monitors. Now I've always wanted one of these cabinets, but um, I didn't think I was going to get one for quite a while. I thought I was going to have to import it from America. But I was lucky enough, one turned up in November last year on the forums and um, I grabbed it. Um, it was a good price, it was in France, it was fairly local, so shipping wasn't too much. And uh, I've got it, it had um, tennis in it, probably for quite a while because it's got a lot of screen burn on the monitors. That's the only disappointing thing with the cabinet, oh, the monitors have got a bit of screen burn. But when you've got games in it that have like a back black background, um, you don't really notice it so much. I'm hoping once I get Balloon Fight, which is the game really I've got the Versus system for, because it is absolutely super game, um, you won't even notice that. Now it's a funny one, uh, the Red Tent, um, or the Jaw system, there's about three different types of cabinets or options you could have. The red tent being one of them. The other one um, was a dual system. Um, like these two, if you can imagine two of these cabinets bolted together, a little bit taller, um, and on a 45 degree angle, that was the other dual system that you would have got in the arcade. Not a great cabinet to have in your home because it takes up so much room, especially when you can have one of these lovely little red tents. The other option you could have, you could have a versus system in this cabinet here, you can have two joysticks, two buttons, a bit like Mario Brothers playing the Versus system, but you you won't be able to play the dual system games like Balloon Fight, Tennis. Um, you can play games that alternate gameplay between players like Pinball, Gradius, uh, Excite Bike, and those sort of games, but games that require um, two players on the screen at once playing against each other like Wrecking Crew and Balloon Fight, you wouldn't be able to have done that. So you're a bit limited with that option. So the, the red tent here, in my mind, is an awesome cab to have. It's almost like, for me, having a jammer cab in my arcade. I really miss my jammer cab. I love arcade games. I don't just like Nintendo. I mean, I like all arcade games. You know, when I go to events and I see a, um, an Asteroids Deluxe or a Robotron, I'm in total awe of those machines and those games. I absolutely love them. But, you know, because I've got such a small space here, I just decided to concentrate on one manufacturer and it just become a lot easier. Um, and, you know, because collecting anything, you know, can get out of hand. I don't know if you're like me. I mean, I can just wander off in so many, so many directions, especially with a company like Nintendo, who make toys and make console games and made arcades. It's like, what do you collect? You know, it used to be Game & Watch, but now I've just concentrated on games. So I collect arcade games, rare Nintendo arcade games, and SNES is my main focus at the moment, and Famicom games, but I do like the modern games too. But when you get time to play all these, I don't know. I try and make time, but it is difficult, especially when you've got a young family like I have. So anyway, the Red 10, let's get back on there, I'm drifting off. <clears throat> um, when I got it, it was a bit grubby, all arcades are when they turn up really, unless they've been in another collection. And it had these art instruction decals on either side. Um, they were a bit grubby, drinks had been spilt down them. Um, and that was basically, they were silver. You can see the, some of the writing's faded here. So I've taken them off and I've got some nice um, original instruction decals of Hogan's Alley and Gumshoe. <laughs> which I haven't got those games, but they do look nice on there for now anyway, until I get some more reproduction ones made up. So yeah, Hogan's Alley, you can have a gun game in here. I think it's free, Duck Hunt, Hogan's Alley and Gumshoe. Free gun games for the Red Tent and for the Versus system, which are really cool. But apparently I've heard if you wire up the gun to the control stick, it doesn't let you control the, the monitor from the other side. You have to do everything off the gun, which is not that appealing. So to be honest with you, I'm not that bothered. I'll play my gun games on my NES system. That's not a problem. But really, the Red Ten, what I've really bought it for, is a handful of really good games. Balloon Fight, um, Excite Bike, Wrecking Crew, 
Dr. Mario, Super Mario Brothers, I'm sure there's some I've forgotten. I'm going to refer to John's Arcade here. John's Arcade is your man, by the way. If you want to know about Versus Systems, he was the guy really who wrote all this up. Basically wrote down, wrote down all the different ROMs, all the different PPUs, which are the picture processing units um, that allow you to play the games. And here are a list of the PPUs and all the games that you can play with those particular PPUs. So if I'm not talking any, any sense, go on to John's Arcade and check out his Versus System uh, forum there, and it's absolutely fantastic. And here he's written down all the games. You've got Star Luster, you've got Pinball, Battle City, Tennis. Tennis is the only four-player game on the dual system, which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been cool to have like sight bike or something like that um, but still it's still really cool I really like it what else have we got we've got Sky Kid that's a good two player game so you play two players Sky Kid on one screen and then on the other screen you can have another game playing so literally you could have four people playing on here you can have two people playing Sky Kid on one side and you could play have two people playing I don't know pinball on the other side so you know it's, it's, it's got a lot of good things going for it. It's really cool. So I'm going to show you around the cab in a minute. Um, what else is there to say? Anything? Um, that's it really. So it came out in about 1984. And it came out after the success in Japan of the Famicom. The Famicom was such a huge success in Japan. Therefore, well, wouldn't it be a cool idea to put these games into an arcade? So that's what they did. So I think in 83 the Famicom came out, and 84, 85 the Versus Dual Systems came out. And the games that came with it were Sight Bike, and you know, a few of the big hitters in the Famicom. So okay, let's show you around the cab now, okay? I'll see if I can, uh, let's just have a little swig of my beer, because I'm a little bit parched, you know what I mean? London Pride, of course. My favourite. Um, so I'm giving it a good clean up, it should look pretty cool, let's take the camera down there. Here's the cab, you can see it's quite low down, it's about waist, just below waist height, but you can make the cab a little higher, you've got adjustments on the side of the cab down here at the bottom. See those bolts, you can undo those bolts and lift the legs up, exactly the same way as you do on my cocktail cab, which is over there, the other end of that cab. And it's a metal cab, like the cocktails. And it's in red paint, funny enough. They went back to the red paint which they had in the late 70s with the cab like Battleshock that I've got and uh, Test Driver. Exactly the same red, um, which is funny because the cocktails that I've got over there were kind of like a brown, browny colour. Um, but the red looks nice on metal, really like that. And there you can see my Noz artwork for Hogan's Alley, which you can have running. You can have all the gun games on here. Um, you can have a gun where the joystick is. I think you attach the gun into there. I'm not going to do it though. I'm quite happy having a setup like this for the games that I want, which is probably just Balloon Fight, Wrecking Crew, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, Super Mario Brothers, and those sort of things. The gun games I'll probably just stick to the NES. So to change a game, you lift the bonnet. It's just like lifting the bonnet of an old car up. It really does feel like that. And you've got to be a bit gentle with it because it's just sort of. The whole weight of that bonnet is just on those hinges there. So I'm really nervous about lifting that up sometimes. And there you can see look, the, the game board. Um, the two connectors going in there. For both sides of the board. And basically you just unplug these connectors. And the whole board just slides out. And then you just slide your new game back in. And Bob's your uncle. Happy as Larry, as they say. So there you go. Pretty cool, huh? See, the monitors are set at 45 degrees. I don't know if you can see in there. You can see the back end, the neck of the other one. Very close together, very tightly knit. But I like that. You know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a nice, tight little cab. But easy just to change the games over. That's what I like about it. You can imagine, like, having the dual system upright. You've got to get in the back of the cab every time, pull the cab out. Whereas this, it's so much easier. So for home use, for a home arcade, this is just brilliant. You know, it's almost as good as having a jammer cab, really. And on this side, I've got my 
gun shoe artwork, Noz artwork, which is really nice. Um, I'm missing a yellow button, unfortunately. I don't know where we're going to get one of those from because they were unique to the the red tent. And I've got Excite Bike running in here. And again, you've got uh, two joysticks on um, both the panels with A and B buttons. And there you pick how many players you're going to use, one to four. Um, so that's it, really. Got a little vent on the side there. And that's it, it's the red 10. I've got Excite Bike running there. You can just pick what game you want. And off it goes. So let's do a little gameplay video now, shall we? I've just coined up. And it's given me three options. Um, beginner, intermediate and advanced. Which is basically track one, track two, or I can jump to track three. Um, which I have been doing recently. Because one and two is quite easy for me. And I'm struggling on track three. I can get to track four as my highest. I've yet to get the gold bike. I'm not going to try and attempt that now. I'm just going to run you through the levels. So let's start on track one. So it goes up to seven tracks. And you've got to qualify for each one. So you've got two buttons. Um, this button here is like a turbo. But if you use it too much, you overheat. So you've got that temperature gauge there. And basically that overheats your your bike if you press that red button too much see I'm going really fast but if you go over an arrow on the uh, on the floor the temperature gauge will start will reset back to zero so if you know where the little arrows are on the ground you can time it just right so I've finished I don't know whether I've qualified because it's difficult playing this game when you're chatting yeah, I've come first. Brilliant. And what I tend to do is move the joystick forward. I don't know this for sure yet, but I think if you move forward when you're in the air, so you're pointing downwards like that, going through the air like this, you go a lot qu quicker. So this is the race now, guys. For track one. I tend to use it when I'm doing the big jumps. It gives you a little warning when you're about to overheat. A little sound kicks in, which is quite handy because you don't really look at the temperature gauge. There we go, one minute two. It's not bad. <clears throat> well, that's the first track, it's pretty easy. You can see the screen burn there from tennis. So, it lets me put my name in. Track two, qualifying. I think if you press the buttons when you've come off, you get back to your bike a lot quicker. It never feels like it, but apparently that is the case. Oh, I missed it. I tried to get that other ramp because it gives you an extra bounce. You know, I've got on there. Third. So it's starting to get harder already. There's a couple of bits on that track that I could have improved on. Like the race, track two. Oh, 
Oh, I've done it again. He does, yeah, he does run. Oh my god. He does run quicker. I've actually noticed it there. I was never doing that before. Come on. I'm going to lose this now. So I'm overheating now. If you hit one of those guys who's going to make his way back to his bike, he'll knock you off as well, so you can't just run them over, although I'd like to. Especially if I know... This is an awful game for me. I don't think I'm going to win. Qualify. Oh, I just missed it again. You get that little bump, you can bump over the, the dirty part of the track. Overheated again. See, I'm not concentrating. Talking and playing, do not mix. Especially with me. I don't know how John does it sometimes. Rubbish. It's a cool game though, it really is. Yeah, I didn't qualify. That's a shame. <clears throat> Which thing of excite biting guys, I really loved it. It's a game that I never played as a kid. I never had a NES as a kid. None of my friends had a NES. I had a Sinclair Spectrum. A couple of mates had uh, BBC Micros and I think some of them had even uh, Commodore 64s but I don't remember any of my friends having a NES and I don't ever remember playing Excite Bike but it's one of those games now that I've just discovered and absolutely loving and um, if you haven't got a Red 10 which I know you probably haven't because there's only two in the country go out and buy Excite Bike for the NES if you've got one because it's absolutely brilliant or you can download it on the Wii U I believe and the 3DS has a 3D version, which is extra cool, um, which I've played quite a lot of. It's really good. Um, but yeah, if you've got a NES, go and buy this. It's the best option. So yeah, it was really cool um, to do that. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks, everyone, for subscribing to me. It's, I've just hit over 100 subscribers, which is really cool. And all your comments are really good. Keep them coming. My next video, and I won't keep it too long this time, I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick run through of all my NES games which I've got um, building up. Um, this year I want to concentrate more on my NES and my SNES collection. Super Famicom especially, there's a lot of games I want to get this year and I'll be doing lots of gameplay reviews of them, which should be cool, so look out for them. So anyway, that's it guys, cheers for now and um, see you in the next video, thanks for watching. <laughs>